rushed in with the waves to a land unprepared for its arrival. They came from all corners of the earth to the American frontier, loosely governed, lacking in order, and with few opportunities for education. Responding to the need, two Jesuits traveled to California to establish what would become its first permanent college, Santa Clara. Almost immediately after founding the college, Father Nobly began making purchases from Europe, filling the shelves with what would soon be one of the finest assortments of scientific apparatus the West had seen. Santa Clara was shaped by the spirit of discovery, the discipline of science and commerce, and the needs of the times. It has never existed for its own sake, and neither have its students. They have always sought both to learn and to serve. Throughout the 1900s, Santa Clara's influence only grew. As Father Jerome Ricard revolutionized early meteorology, many relied on his monthly publications, informing everything from Hollywood production schedules to the planting of crops to feed a nation. John Montgomery, a Santa Clara graduate and later physics professor, showed the potential for flight with his pioneering flying machines some 20 years before the historic achievements of the Wright brothers. The world today is ever more complex, ever more in need of new ideas and new ways of thinking about solutions to problems that defy conventional approaches. The well-being of our world and the future of our society depend upon a new spirit, a new philosophy of innovation. The world looks to the ideas, the thinking, the values that have fueled the rise of Santa Clara and that today inspire it to even more, to become a center of innovation and entrepreneurship in service to humanity. We live in a world that races day in and day out to grow and advance bigger, better, faster, to find what's next. Santa Clara has always been a pioneer in discovery, in generating new knowledge, and technological advancement. But the difference at its core lies in asking why, in seeking a purpose, in the values that inspire and drive our work, in the quest for a more just, humane, and sustainable world. While it is in our nature to adapt, to grow, to innovate, Santa Clara has always gone beyond that. And we continue to every day. Construction material usage is one of our greatest uses of raw materials in the United States. And it continues to grow partly because we're a bit of a throwaway society. Antibiotic resistant bacteria are being found all over the world. In the United States, 50,000 people die each year because the first antibiotic that's tried isn't effective. Because cancer drugs represent a billion dollar market, there is this huge race to develop the right in vitro model. In this moment when there's actually enough food to supply everybody in the world. We have close to 800 million people around the world, almost half of which are small-scale farmers and farm workers that live through periods of seasonal hunger. We tend to attract students that actually are interested in working to solve real problems. Santa Clara is all about that, and the students are really eager to actually participate. So we provide them with opportunities to actually make an impact, a real one. My name is JJ Galvin. I'm the project manager for the Tiny House team and we're a group of students that are learning to use our engineering skills outside of the classroom by building an off-grid tiny house. We have electrical, mechanical, civil, all the different disciplines of engineering. We've all had to work together very closely and take into account things that we might not normally. One of the really innovative aspects of this house uh, concerns its solar array. We've partnered with a solar tracking company that does solar tracking rings. Since our house is so small, we wouldn't be able to fit it just on the solar panels. So we decided to modify our trailer so that the entire thing rotates as the sun moves in the sky throughout the day. 
Our research studies microbial evolution. Uh, recently, we've used our knowledge to start a collaboration with the Alameda Public Health Labs. And in this collaboration, we're developing software that will use whole genome sequence information to both identify bacteria, but then also identify what mutations they might carry that confer antibiotic resistance. It's not every day that an undergrad student gets to say, we have the potential to patent this, you know, like the software, this incredible tool that can be applied directly, you know, to patients, to hospitals, to communities. That's not the norm. So as you can imagine, it's quite impractical and maybe even very expensive to use actual human patients to test for or discover new cancer therapeutics. How our lab is contributing to this a little differently is by trying to understand what parameters may affect cell responses to new drugs. Once we have optimized the final parameters that are necessary for these biomaterial scaffolds to mimic or predict human responses to new therapeutics, these parameters can then be deployed to various scientists and researchers around the world so they can come together and discover new therapeutics against cancer, which is one of the biggest challenges we face in the world today. Right now, I feel that environmentalism has a very like narrow narrative that is pretty exclusive to most of the people actually affected by environmental degradation. I was able to go to Uganda as a Global Social Benefit Fellow, and in that fellowship, I did, conducted action research with a social enterprise called BANA. So they're working within communities and educating women and men and community leaders because if you don't have everyone working and you have 20% of the people making solutions for everyone else, they're not going to actually be long-term sustainable solutions, which is what we need in environmentalism. We just finished the first year of a project looking at food and water security with small-scale farmers. After documenting these patterns of linking uh, the presence of fruit trees on smallholder farms to shorter periods of seasonal hunger or better food security outcomes. We took this recommendation, we shared it with the cooperatives, we shared it with community agroecology ecology network, nonprofit organizations, we presented it back in these different formats. The environmental policy challenge really is how do we incentivize the green infrastructure, the social interactions and the communication to create more sustainable cities. It's an important trend right now, in, you know, the society finally figure we can help, so let's, you know, put our hands together and, and make sure that people have clean water. It's the 21st century, come on. The students sometimes, when they first come, they don't even understand that that's a problem, that people actually don't have access to power or paved roads or sewage. So, but this is a way of showing them that they can actually use their engineering skills to do much more than that. Progress for the sake of progress can have an intoxicating appeal but it can also mean missed opportunity. There's an ethical obligation to keep in mind while racing toward discovery and innovation. As you enter your respective fields in computer engineering, biophysics, public health, remember that good work goes beyond whatever you can create in a lab. It asks questions. It responds to the world's needs. Good work is bold. It doesn't listen to all the noise around it. It simply does what's right, no matter how hard. You are all equipped to take on tomorrow's challenges, but it takes the bull to choose to do so. The future will always favor the bold, my friends, because it's never been enough simply to win the race. <laughs>